Hello Art 1-2 and welcome to your graduated tone exercise demonstration. So you need this handout. The back of it looks like this for the example. So this is the side that I, we're obviously doing. Um, you're also going to need news, the chunk of newspaper padding. You have shading pencils in your bag. There's a 2B and a 6B shading pencil and then your regular old school wooden yellow pencil as well. So take a pause and get these things and then come back. All right, so now that you're back with all your stuff, um, this is double-sided for you, this is one page. I just have it separately so I can refer to it. So I'm gonna set that off to the side. Okay. We are going to start off with it says 6B, like right there, 6B, um, which is a darker pencil. So for this box, we want to have it really dark fading out into the white of the paper. So this is very, very similar to what you did for cubism. So I am going to hold my pencil in the middle and I'm going to go over the edge because I'm going to start out with good craftsmanship and then I'm going to kind of fade out as it's supposed to fade out. So craftsmanship even counts in practices. Okay, then I'm going to hold my pencil horizontally in the middle and you can use this finger for pressure but I'm going to use the side of my 6B graphite pencil instead of the tip of it especially since it's a large area. I'm also using a circular motion or like an oval type motion. And for graphite, we have to do layers to kind of build it up. And you can turn the paper so your arm is comfortable. And then also the different directions help to make it um, look smooth. So I was going like kind of horizontally. Um, now I'm going to go diagonally with a circular motion because I'm already starting to lighten up my pressure to fade out. So I'm kind of lifting up my wrist a little bit. I'm going to go super, super light. And I'm going to come back with 2B in that location to make it look smooth. Okay, so now I'm going to come back And I'm holding it in the center, but I'm still trying to use like the edge of the graphite. But I am applying a little bit more pressure on this side. So the key is that we don't want to see a line where one value starts and the next one stops. to just fade out okay so at a certain point this is not drawing paper it's copy paper it will only take so much graphite so in our actual assignments for graphite you're definitely going to be using drawing paper because it's better all right so now I'm going to switch pencils I'm going to grab my 2b pencil so the lower the number the lighter the value so 2b is lighter than 6b and so I'm going to do a thin layer just to get my um, different pencils to overlap a little bit and I'm going to lighten up my pressure and I'm trying to get rid of like these lines dividing the value okay, I'm gonna go this way a little bit I'm overlapping or crisscrossing my application. So we don't want to see any lines. It should be a smooth transition. And if you got any pencil outside of the lines, you're going to clean it up before moving on. All right, so not perfect, but without using a blender and just doing it by hand, that's not bad. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to start fading out sooner because we want the white... Um, area to kind of fade in the center. So I'm going to start with 6B. 
going to go a little bit darker along the edge. Notice how I'm holding my pencil in the middle. So I don't want it to be too, too dark. I'm going to do the other side too. Might as well. It's going to be dark on this side as well. And I'm kind of fading out. Okay, so a 6B. So I'm holding it more towards the end and I'm still using the side of the graphite. So if you don't have a lot of control holding it this way, you could try holding it at the end so you're still angling it, angling down to then put graphite on the paper. And so part of the reason for holding it further away from the center is you don't press as hard, so therefore you're gonna get a smoother application of your graphite. So I'm still using circular motion, but I'm doing multiple directions. And I'm really starting to fade out because then I'm gonna switch pencils. But before I do that, I'm going to do another layer over on this side to build up my darks. So with graphite, you have to kind of work it into the paper, like push it into the paper a little bit by building up your layers. Okay, I'm going to switch to my 2B pencil. change direction so I kind of moved the paper to help me change direction because really you just want your arm to be comfortable so that it can so now I'm gonna hold it horizontally um, you want the paper to be comfortable I'm sorry you want to move the paper so your arm is comfortable so that you can get like the smoothest application possible so I'm using really light pressure with a 2b pencil like I can still probably fade that in but I'm gonna kind of fix it um, after I do this other side okay so back with my 6B and I'm using the side of my pencil holding it horizontally somewhat in the middle Okay, I'm going to build up that layer and turn it so my arm is comfortable. Okay, now, oh, getting out of the lines here. I'm going to switch to the tubi. Going over like where the 6B ended. Going a different direction. So this is an exercise in pressure. Because with shading, whether you're shading with colored pencil, graphite, Later on, if you take Art 3, 4, maybe charcoal, pastel, even painting sometimes. It's all about like artist pressure to get the effect that you want. So this is what we're practicing. It's probably the thing that takes the longest to develop too. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure it smoothly kind of fades in. I'm gonna do one, one more once over. Okay. 
All right, pretty decent. All right, moving on to um, number three, this one. Um, so I just want to notice like what side. So in that little box, it fades from dark to light and then dark to light and then dark to light and dark to light. So we just want to make sure that you can still see the difference between the two um, or the, like, and then also notice how it's like darker in here and it kind of fades out darker. So we're trying to get these bands or like lines to separate. All right, so I'm definitely tracing this out. And so I am holding it a little bit back from the tip of the pencil because this is a small area. And so I'm definitely using circular motion. Circular motion. Fading out and I have the little piece of white showing. All right, the next one, darker along the edge. So I'm gonna trace it on the darker part and kind of fade into what the line looks like currently. So now I'm scooting back a little bit to the middle because I can have a little less control, but I'm still trying to use the side of the pencil. So notice how I really have not sharpened my pencils. Of course, if you need to, sh if you need to sharpen to start out, that's okay. But if you're trying to get a smooth application of value, you're going to want to not super sharpen your pencil because then it creates a lot of line when you're shading. Now we're trying to make it look smooth. Smooth. Okay, and I'm gonna save the other side with like my 2B, but I'm gonna go back over this side. Okay, I'm gonna switch to 2B because I don't want it to get a whole, whole lot darker right here, but I wanna smooth it out. Okay, switching back to my 6B. We're gonna do these two for part one and then we'll do the ones below for part two. Okay. So I'm trying to match that outline that I just created to get it to fade out. So even along here, I'm trying to match the line and fade in. Down at the low, match the line. Fade in. So it looks like it's lighter when you get closer to the other square box. Okay, now I'm going to fade out with my 6B. Fade out. All right, then I'm going to switch to 2B. And I'm barely going to have any value. Fading out into the white of the paper, which I didn't do so good on that one, but we'll do it on this one. And I think I'm just going to do a once over with 2B over here just to add another layer and get it to look a little more smooth. Okay, last, switching back to my 6B. And 
fading out with my line. Okay. Matching the line and fading in. So we definitely want a difference between this band and then the one we're adding right here. So there should be a visual difference in value so it separates the two parts. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on for our next project, which is a still life that you guys had the presentation on. And really, we're gonna to try to avoid outlining. Um, and so we're gonna use a change in value to visually separate uh, your areas. Okay, I'm going to switch to my tubing because I don't want to get too dark, but I do want to still try to smooth out this outside layer. And I do a layer over the 6B just to kind of get the two to blend. So I'm holding my pencil a little bit past halfway. The further back you can scoot, the better. The less pressure you'll be using. Circular motion, always. I feel like I got a little bit too dark along here. So I'm gonna erase out a little bit. Kind of tap it to get it to blend in. It's the light values that are difficult, especially in this type of paper. So you can kind of get it good, then we'd say that's good. All right, so now let's do this one. And it's pretty much opposites. So the square is darker on the right, fading to lighter on the left. Okay, then it's darker on the left side. Get a clean line. I'm going to fade out this line. And this one I'll probably switch to the 2B for the lighter parts for sure. So I'm going to go darker, match that line, fade it in. All right, I'm going to change direction with a circular motion. And I'm gonna start fading out already. Like when I get to the, a little bit before middle, I would start fading out. Okay, so then, So I'm switch, I switched to two B so that I can fade out. And I'm gonna overlap the six B a little bit to get it to look smoother, more smooth. Stuff like this I could be a little bit darker but this paper only takes so much graphite because it's not very thick all right so now I'm gonna switch back to 6b because then this side is darker I'm 
I'm gonna fade this line out. Okay. Turn so your arm is comfortable. So now my paper's upside down. So I'm gonna be careful of touching this area because then fingerprints are gonna happen everywhere. So I'm just gonna touch on the sides or touch on the bottom or the top part here. Try not to touch where I put graphite. And then as we're working on our project, we have some tips and techniques for that. So we definitely don't want fingerprints everywhere. We're gonna to try to avoid fingerprints. You don't need a crime scene all over your paper. Okay, so. Clean line, fading out, fading out. Okay, I'm gonna switch to 2B. And I'm cleaning up my edges too along this box. Okay, so I'm gonna turn for a very light value. So I'm holding my pencil near the end for less pressure, circular motion, or oval, ovally kind of motion. I'm going over my 6B part just to make sure it's as smooth as possible, but I can get it more smooth up here. I'm gonna clean up that. Okay. All right, switching back to 6B. Actually gonna go a clean edge for this part too. Kind of fade in. Alright, circular motion. I'm holding in the middle. And I'm using like a decent amount of pressure. Like medium pressure, I would think. Enough where I can go back and do a second layer in the opposite direction. Okay, I'm gonna fade out, fade out, fade out. Okay, now I'm gonna fade out this bottom part. Switch to two B. Okay, just a little. Okay, we're almost done with part one. You guys are really only getting two parts because it takes forever to upload to YouTube and then put it in Google Docs. So. All right. So now you're going to move on to part two and we're going to do the bottom half. All right. I'll see you in just a second.